long time. I just thought we would start at the beginning of the film and the Jacob Reese and like how you came across those photos and the, their use of them. Jacob Reese, it's mm, I've known him for a long time. I'm always liked f photography since. Since I was very young, I tried to do photography, so, but it's a very difficult uh, thing. To, uh, find it very difficult, and um, but the um, pleasure of um, seeing some photographs. Some photographers is still perhaps a bit less now, but it's still something. Sometimes it was m even more important than films for mm. me, than cinema. And then photography for me was always yeah parallel to m music and photography, films and. I always thought that what lacks, what lacked in film, it's in the eighties or the eighties was a nightmare <coughs> in film, or the seventies when I was beginning to see films, and what 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 was missing in some films were I was. Um, uh, finding in, in some photographers or, or music, of course. Music was very important at that moment. And Rees came, I don't know, came because one thing led to another. Probably Danny Lyon, you know, yeah. Robert Frank, mm -hmm. Danny Lyon, this kind of I was, I uh, have to say that photography interest, it's interesting to me in this as, as a realistic uh, thing, mm. as a form of realistic uh, proof. Mm. I, I'm not interested in photography as an experiment, an experimental thing, and um, this kind of thing, as in film. It, it's I'm not, I don't like it, I'm not interested in it, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. <coughs> so it's, but mm, yeah, mm, I could say that it's even more mm, what the limitations or the limits of film are very, I think, very uh, precise uh, and photography is a bit broader in this realistic uh, photography cannot ex can't ex cannot ex escape realism mm. I think there's no way of escaping realism so uh, but I couldn't do photography I couldn't as I couldn't do music so I had to do film, which is a shame because. But sure. Jacob Rees has. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have, um, has another thing is. He he had this commitment, this engagement, this, and this kind of people still are very. I praise this, this this man. Mm. Like, uh, well, Walker Evans. And is a citizen, mm. artist, citizen that never forgets that it's not the militant or the the political, obvious political side of it, but it's it's a very discreet uh, way of acting. Uh, 
Jaco Reese, nobody knows Jaco Reese. Nobody knows. It's not the photographer that you have. It's not the kind of book that you have in your uh, salon, mm -hmm. you know, on the, on the coffee table. You probably have Walker Evans, but not Jacob Reese. Mm. Jacob Reese is too primitive, too. Mm, but for me, it's very interesting, very, very strong, very, mm, very obscure. And, and I, s I, I read all of his stuff, a lot of his stuff. And you know, I don't know if you know, but he wrote Christmas stories. He wrote uh, How the Other Half Lives. Mm. He wrote uh, novels. He wrote police reports. He was a very... Uh, uh, he knew how to do everything. He invented the flash. Mm. Something. <laughs> So, no, but um, it was in my mind having uh, this stupid idea that I could do a documentary about Jacob Rees. Mm. Yeah, no, no, no. no interest, in, you know, no interest in doing another documentary about Jacob Rees, but it stayed somewhere behind my mind and, and uh, uh, when I had this idea of or idea when I had this desire of working with Gil Scott mm. Heron and it seemed um, actually he knew he knew him I was not surprised he knew the photographs, he knew I was talking about someone he knew, and so we shared something. And it went together very well, this Jacob Rees images with his poetry and, and Ventura and... And Colossal Youth Venture is also kind of associated with the Rubens and the, the Van Dykes that are in the in the museum. Mm. And here there's a there's the photos and then there's a painting again. Yeah. And you've also kind of associated them with Gil Scott Heron. Mm. And there's the quote about Venture. Well now you know because you didn't know before. <laughs> like people talking about Tourneur, I'm I'm very now everybody talks about Tourneur and <laughs> Fritz Lang. Nobody knows who Tourneur is. Except 30 guys in Paris and but now everybody then says that uh, oh the shots like Turner this has nothing to do with Turner <laughs> I mean but well okay well and I was going to say the opening reminds me of um, it is not like an exact quotation but it, it has the energy of when Henry Fonda as Lincoln is about to go out at near the end of Young Mr. Lincoln how mm. uh, there's kind of the, the shots a little off and he's kind of like slowly making his way out Mm. Um, I got that energy and it made me think of what was said about Ventura, which is that when he's like, when they see him in day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. he may not be a great person, but when he's on the screen, mm. he's emblematic. And that's mm. something that it seems like Gil Scott Heron also embodied. Mm. Yeah, that's what, that's one of the, um, the best uh, criticism I had in my life was one young guy in the um, Fontaine and when we did um, yeah colossal youth he um, after the screening the um, release first night of the screening of the film he um, I we did um, a screening for the people in the, in the neighborhood and and he was very touched and moved, this young guy. Well, he was at that time a little bit into music, rap, and social and political activism in the neighborhood. He was one of the young, angry men. And he's, that's exactly what he said. He said, um, 
Ventura, when we when we see you in every day in, in the neighborhood, you're you're just a, you're just a bum. You're just a, a guy, and a dirty old bum. And now we see you, and you you really um, stand there for all of us. Mm. It's priceless, this kind of, and it, that's what happens here with Ventura, with a lot of people. But that's not only him; it's the well, it's the film. You know. it's, uh, music was supposed to be in the beginning of this project because of Scott Herrick. And then a little bit before Scott Herrick death, I was, I don't know, I was a bit worried because Ventura was also a bit tired and confused and uh, feeling a bit worse from all of his problems. Uh, we had, I was all also a bit lost in, and, and then Scott Heron died and then Ventura got really sick. And then he went to, host to the hospital and he stayed for um, one month or something. Um, and then we had a lot of complications in production um, because I work in this kind of stupid, stubborn way. I'm trying to work with three guys and in a certain way with this very low, low budget. And and it's just not possible because they have to go do some other stuff. And so they were not there. And, and I was a bit sad and angry because they are not there, but they have to feed the, the family. Mm. So it's <coughs> so between deaths and hospitals and wages and, you know, it's too much reality for if one small field. <laughs> <laughs> so it took a long time for this one to get on its feet. Mm. Um, took really a long time to get it um, to stand a little bit to first to it was was difficult to and it I think it, it it shows a little bit um, somewhere, but well, I don't want to talk about the the weakest um, things in the film. It does seem like it's evolving as it goes along. Like the style is somewhat changing. It's not as as linear or as consistent in its approach as maybe some of the other films, especially like Sweet Exorcism seems like it's just very much a story that, you know, he's venture is lost and he kind of makes his way out of the woods mm -hmm. and he's back. Mm -hmm. Whereas this seems slightly darker maybe? No, the other short, the short film, the, it exists. There was always the, the um, the sickness, the illness, the hospital framing of of everything. And the idea was that we would do a film about the moment when Ventura was in the hospital. Mm. So um, it's still very. Um, it feels. Do you, f you think it's very dark? You say dark? 
A little. There's two sentences that came stood out to me. One was, I can't remember who said it, but it was, this will happen again. And this feeling of a looping or like a cyclical quality mm -hmm. and how Ventura hasn't gotten over what has kind of shocked him. But also, um, in the elevator, there's a line of, um, I remember, remember you are a soldier. Mm. But he isn't, and that's like a source of fear and this kind of mm. being associated with something that you're afraid of. Those are, are vulnerable moments. Well, that part, uh, the, um, the part in the elevator is just... Uh, yeah, it's the moment when he's, he's confronting all the... Let's say that this revolution... I shouldn't be telling you this, but... It does not exist. It doesn't exist. It's not a Portuguese revolution. It's an essay of. It's an essay. It's uh, an attempt of talking about some stuff that worries me and worries Ventura or interests me and interest and worries. It Preoccupation and interest is it's the same for mm. me and Ventura. That's why we, I think, understand each other very well. But let's say that this revolution, or this thing that so many people talk about now after seeing the film, it's not the Portuguese revolution, it's not it could be the October Revolution, mm. it could be the Cuban Revolution. It's, um, it's a dream. Mm. I don't know if it has to do, it, it has a real uh, link to the Portuguese Revolution, after all. Just in terms of writing, mm. writing, uh, organizing the, um, what, what you hear and what you, what you hear, because you don't see anything, mm. what you hear in the film. You hear you get some information about soldiers and, and people in the streets and people shouting stuff like remember you're also a soldier or remember you're also a fighter or you're a son of the people or stuff like that. <coughs> um, no, it was just. It was just to finish this very old story or dream, nightmare that we call revolution. I still used to call it. And I felt that Ventura wanted to finish with it for um, close this door, mm. this old uh, buzz, this, uh, this uh, confusion in his head. I th mm, feel a little bit guilty. Mm. And, and I think that a great part of the um, suffering and uh, uh, has to do with this moment of the revolution of this. what we call the hot summer of 75. Mm. Just the other day I, t I, I told about Spike Lee because 
he did this thing, uh, the summer of Sam, and we do the and the revolution in in seventy five, which was. the same kind of mm, same kind of thriller same kind of well anyway it's a very <coughs> it's a nightmare for Ventura and for a lot of people like him Ventura shows it a little bit more than the others Not that he talks about it or shows shows it in an exuberant way, but you can see it in his um, in his tragic um, manner. Um, it could have been like. Um, he could have stood behind and beside and with the soldiers, with the young soldiers. Mm. But he was already too um, too lost, too far away, too drunk, too mm, and too afraid to understand that what was happening. Mm. But it's a shame because he was the same age. He, he had the same energy, had the same two arms, and but I'm I'm telling you stuff that I shouldn't because yesterday I saw Godard's film and I was very disturbed because I think it's even worse than this one. Worse in the sense that it's, we sh it's you mentioned the preoccupations, the Ventura, and, and there are certain things that come up in colossal youth that come up in this film, and I'm wondering if those are preoccupations. So there are the knives, there's the letter. He writes a letter in both, mm -hmm. a letter to help someone else, it seems. And the head wound, which in Colossal Youth is a, it's something that acts in construction, right? And, yeah. and here it's meant to be more something that's suffered. Are, are these all based on things that happened? Are they things he's preoccupied with? Are there ideas you have as well? No, the knives are very... Well, it came from the, the melodramatic... Um, side of the story or there is um, this mm, plot Ventura mm, and another guy the other guy in the film um, fighting mm, or over mm, perhaps a woman perhaps money perhaps perhaps more a woman it's never it's, it's, it's not clear. So, but the knife is um, the knife is something you you have you have in your pocket, especially in this moment. In seventy five, um, they had the knives in their pockets. And you'd never know, and the passport. They always insist on the passport and the knife. Um, I don't know, some Mexican song says uh, the, mm, the pistol and the heart. It's like, it's the same thing. Mm. Mm. It's like, pistol e o coração. It's melodrama and the passport and the knife. And so that's that part. <coughs> the letter is a passport, a password to another world. 
this film is a passport to how do you say I mean, to oblivion mm. I mean, this film is just because it's not written it's not um, in the other film I made before the letter could not be written mm. it could not be could not be fixed as, uh, how do you say put down put down more in the sense of yeah um, could be stopped in time mm. uh, I don't know how to say frozen yeah. Fro yeah, fixed yeah, fixed fixed, yeah. fixed here you don't know what's what's the text And, um, but it's a passport or a password or a it's almost an image of oblivion. I don't know how to do the, that image, but it could. It's almost a, um, an image. It, it's yeah. It's a door opening to death almost. Yeah. It could. Let's say it can kill, it cannot save. So That's the inverse of the birth certificate? Uh, yeah, everything written and in this film is very, it's... Um, yeah, you see all the documents, all the... Um, are very yeah doors opening f windows opening to nothingness hmm. you use a lot of frames and doors in your films mm. in general I think you reference Mizuguchi. not anymore he's a Gucci in the street of shame I don't remember <laughs> Mr. Gucci I'm sorry <laughs> I don't know we have a I frame right there. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <coughs> no, I would prefer talking about Godard now because <coughs> he bugs me a little bit more than Mizoguchi, but and I would say it's the same problem, which is um, trying to forget, I think. And trying to forget in a way that um, that is interesting. Trying to forget in a way that could remember something. <coughs> difficult, difficult task, difficult job. F just for him, but he's um, trying to forget a lot of things. Um, guilt, the remorse, the, the what he couldn't, what he didn't achieve, what he didn't. Mm, everything at once. It's it's very difficult. That's what I thought seeing his film. Very. I don't know if it's. But there's something in this film. In this my film. <coughs> Uh, concerning the um, the the way we s the I'm trying to send you to to reality perhaps mm, It's a bit more um, uh, simple and a bit more, but I mean, with this, um, uh, all the documents that are in the film and all the um, letters, not non-written or um, trying to be written. written I 
I think it's the same effort. Trying to forget. Hmm. And what does it mean that the the elevator is the space that's you know between places? It's no, the elevator is just a mm, place where Ventura talks with his dead people, living people, imaginary people. Um, it's a um, It's a box. Mm. It's like when he says, um, I think there's a moment when v uh, Vitalina, the woman, says, um, so what, what do you do? What do you do here in this place? And this place is it's his life. What do you do here? And he says, I, s I talk or speak to the walls. I mm. talk to them. So it's trying to get the walls closer to him. And so there's these three walls, at least three walls. Um, it's the walls that talk. You shoot, shoot a lot of walls in your, your films, like the camera tends to linger on walls before or after. There was a filmmaker that said that walls could be spectacular. You know who said that? No. Who was it? I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but Perhaps he was right. A wall can be spectacular, yeah. Um, but I think the, the it's a little bit true. A wall can 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 have a significance. I mean, so. Mm, yeah, but the the, li the 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 elevator, the lift was a moment when Ventura would begin a conversation with himself. Mm. So, trying to have a conversation, Ventura with himself, because he cannot talk with anyone like me. Mm. So we have to write something for a lot of characters. He has to write the parts, invent the characters, and some he knows, his wife, neighbors, friends, dead brother, others he imagines. Soldiers, doctors, uh, Vitalina probably is an invention, mm. and the other woman, or so, so stuff like that. Ventura is not capable of telling his um, story, his life, mm. so. I have this um, job of doing that for him, but I don't have the story, I don't have the characters, I don't have the sets, I don't have the makeup, I don't have the costumes, I don't have the catering, I don't have anything. So, so we are reduced to three, four walls. Yeah. All the time, and it's worse and worse between bad and worse. 
Is that why Vitalina always comes late? She comes late to the funeral? Like, like you have the, the statue of the goddess before she arrives, but she's coming, she's coming late, she's missing things. Is it, is it because of that she's a figment, or...? Perhaps you, perhaps you're right. I don't know. I've never thought about that. Perhaps she's late because she wanted to be late. It's even worse. Who knows? I don't know. Was the section of statues supposed to kind of rhyme with the section where all of the the, the children of Fontenyas are like in their 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 stoops or their front doors or their the two kind of come at similar points? It's not that many statues. Yeah, I shot a lot of statues because I wanted, I had this idea that Vitalina would walk, would come to the film, to the country, to the, she would land, uh, almost as the plane would land be, mm, between statues of mm, gardens or parks at night, things like that creatures of the night and I shot, we shot for nights and nights that was one of the moments in the film when we mm, had no scenes with dialogue or we went and shoot some statues at night just two, three, three of, three of us so we shot kings and poets and mm, mythological figures and, and the idea was to have them around Vitalina when she arrived. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then uh, I just had to, yeah, not even two, was, yeah, two. Statues are um, for the night, I think. Uh, they belong in they belong in parks, in between trees. They belong to the people that sleep under the moon and the stars. So they belong to, to Vitalina, to when she comes. With nothing, she has nothing. She comes empty-handed, so she walks at night. And her companions would be the statues, mm. of Portuguese poets. I would like that, but especially one that I shot a statue of a Portuguese poet that I like very much, but couldn't couldn't put him in the film. So. But they would be companions to to her um, let me say um, she was late yeah. so she's lost this. What about Ventura's companions his what he calls in colossal youth his children? Some are dead, some are in Germany, some disappeared, and some are um, doing well, doing normal jobs. And one in Switzerland. Yeah, they're working in the cleaning thing, uh, company. What about the ones in the film, though, that are literally crying out for him? Mm, they say, come back. Come back, yeah. Um, no, no if, if you see the shot, they are at least, I told the kids, be angry. So they are angry and um, but 
they they don't need protection. Mm. They, they are strong. I don't know. It's another world. Ventura, it's another world. So, um, it's, a v it's another world with some ancient uh, words and it's not, it's, it, it doesn't come from books or comes from but almost, 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 almost. And so, so make it, it turns, it makes the film a bit, you know, and gives the film this literary, historical, uh, almost intellectual weight and frame. I'm feeling now because now is the film is becoming to be a bit seen and I think it bugs people. I mean, it preoccupies mm. people. People tell me I I I need to know more to to s to understand the film, which is strange. Mm. But that's. Um, And I'm, I don't know, I don't know. People tell me, well, I've, I hear that people say uh, we, we do not have all the information about this uh, situation. So we do not understand what's happening. I don't know, I think it's more that because Ventura is uh, like the other guy says, it's a force of the past, so it's an ancient figure of with uh, another kind of different kind of feelings yeah. and behavior almost. It's almost is standing up in a different way, you know, like a <coughs> like a monkey. Yeah. It's a monkey, Ventura. Sometimes it's, it's much more, um, it's, it's very m much like a monkey, like a, a gorilla, a chimpanzee. Not because it's black, because it's because it's much more um, naked than we are, yeah. I think. Naked in the sense that Mm. Disarms people. It it just is. It doesn't need to pretend anything. It doesn't need to. It doesn't desire. Doesn't aspire. Doesn't imagine. Doesn't have an opinion. Doesn't. It doesn't like you or dislike you. What about the scene where he's, si because music's so important, where he's singing but he's not getting the same lyrics as his companion? Mm. Yeah. Well, that was, um, we came to that um, it was not written like that, it was written um, around just the, the meeting of him and his uh, nephew. Yeah. And then they would talk about the factory, and because they both worked at that factory, really. And the factory went bankrupt. And and, um, but then music became so important as a, a sort of link or a, 
a connection between it it was almost the only way they could um, talk or remember something and and then with this song the way the way they get to the song and I wanted to see um, I, I, I don't really be that's why it, but I'm very disturbed by this tourneur thing because it's not really it's just um, it's not really it's too easy this ghost talk mm. between us when you write I'm not ac accusing you but <laughs> when you write or um, they write they always write about the ghosts and it's a bit too easy. What I wanted to do in this, to do, I wanted to just give the impression that some guys die, go away and other guys remain. It doesn't mean they are ghosts. Or you have to be a bit more um, pragmatic, let's say. Some people stay. They yeah. stay because they had strong character ideas. They did some things. They, they belong to um, humanity in different ways. They, they left ideas. Um, they left machines, even they left ways of being, ways of procedure. Or, I don't know, scientists, philosophers, artists, uh, workers. Um, so I wanted to just do s something very small about remaining and not remaining and fading yeah. and that's what what happens it's a guy waiting for um, for four um, hundred dollars and another guy um, Beside him, um, this talk about ghosts is strange. You described the film as there being a kind of game of power that happens both with you and Ventura within it. Mm -hmm. and I'm curious what games both of you are playing. I assume No game like of power and no, all. I don't know if I told that. Um, it's not power, it's we should I have to because a film is also um has something to do with um, we have to get somewhere. We have to get somewhere. We have to finish. We have to complete. We have to there is a beginning and an end, and that mm, has no poetry um, at all. It's, we have to begin and to finish, mm, even if it's very unprecise. There is always a first and a last day of shooting. It's, it's like it's a human condition, c 
condition. You have to finish what you started. So, and that's our, um, the power I was talking about is that I'm always saying to Venturi, we have to finish. But the problem is he's much more um, st strong and capable of telling me by other means that we have to finish than me with the camera. Hmm. He tells me all the time without camera that I'm that I'm not capable and I'm that I'm not It's um let's say it's at um, this what you call a power game it's not uh, it's between us and it's it's very not secret but it's between us and it's um the the, the word power is perhaps not the best one it's I would like to understand him yeah. and he probably he would like to do it um, open up his being to me yeah. open up his past uh, yes. And what happens is that um, because of this machine or this camera that we have between us, it never happens. I will never understand him and he will never reveal himself. And, but it's okay. I, th I know that, I, he knows that, and that's because and that's why I, I prefer working with him or people like him. Um, because at least we know that what we, the work we have to do is always um, this trying to come closer mm. and, and this failure. So, um, it's a very, very black, dark uh, ocean between us. That's what I call it. There's a lot of things that I don't understand in the, f in the film, in this film, in the other films. And I think a filmmaker should sometimes let that inside, let that get inside the film. Yeah. Something that he doesn't understand, something, things that he doesn't like, even, even colors or um, words. Or so, um, not saying that this is the opposite of control, mm -hmm. controlling everything, but let those things in. Just mining your film, mining, mining in the sense of terrorizing your film by something. And I'm that's perhaps the thing I'm beginning to share with Godard. It's because I'm terrorized of what's happening inside the film. Hmm. As a filmmaker, as the master of the film, I'm beginning to get to be a bit terrorized, and that's not a good feeling while doing it. After is after is when the film is done is um, well, but it surely comes from the way they, the people we are mm, 
I mean, the figures, the, the statues, the words and the faces and the statues in the film, the way they appropriate, the, they become masters of the, the whole thing. It's very terrorizing for me. Um, It's not a power thing, it's just uh, it's the price you pay for um, the price you pay. It's what it is. Um, I think with other kind of people you would have some dialogues and they would say the dialogues and they would act and <coughs> this way you have other things. I don't know, but I'm I have the strange feeling that um, it's not a strange feeling. This strange feeling is not the right formula. It's I have the uh, feeling that. Um, Ventura and Vitaline and a lot of people, even Wanda or other people, we have the same idea, even if it's phrased with different, very different words. And we have the same idea of the present, of our present. It has nothing to do with films or cinema. Or we have the same idea of the present, how we got here, why we got here, how bad it is, why do we hurt ourselves so much all the time, every second of our lives, and our impotence and our um, mm, uh, desolation, our sadness, profound sadness. So, because we feel like this, I think we have to analyze, we like to analyze, we think it's interesting to find out why we got here. So, we go back, we try to remember certain moments or our mm, personal stories and our personal stories immediately link to a common history. Yeah. And when we get to that, we go way back to some very t terrifying stuff, I think. So... A difference, maybe? I, I know you've talked about how your own experience in the early 70s, you would have been the one shouting, mm. and Ventura would have been the one that would have been mm. afraid of that. Yeah, well... Um, how can you... Well, the, the movement to... has different... there's different... Um, various... desires, ideas to make a film or to make what well, let's stay with film. And mine was like a detective, you know, like um, which is not different from a lot of filmmakers actually. Like the Baudelaire detective? Baudelaire, Chandler um, all the detectives, um, when, when I hear that Ventura was somewhere geographically very close to where I was on a certain date, you know, 10 o'clock in the evening, um, that day, Monday, 
uh, and he was um, afraid and I was uh, happy and the same year, the same day, the same hour, something that happens and there is a fictional motor that starts running. Um, that was the, um, the first movement that I had for this film. He was here and I was here and I had a black banner and it was with three friends pretending to be anarchists or something. And I was 13. I was three hours to break the windows and the the windows of the embassy of Spain. And Ventura was three hours to close all his windows or doors in his shack in his neighborhood, which was not very close, very far from the embassy of Spain. So <coughs> it's not only that the fact that history of the revolution is not well told or parts of the revolution that are always um, forgotten, mistaken, misjudged. It's not that. that um, I don't. Always be like that in Iran, Syria, Portugal, Cuba. It's a more. Um, it's an. Uh, it exactly, it's the detective Baudelaire Chandler part of the thing that it's the. Um, why is he afraid of the crowd, and why I am with the crowd, and. Let's start with that. Let's begin with that. So I began with that and we came to... Um, we were talking about the darkness of this film, but one thing that stands out as being light is kind of the, the telephone plant. The plant where when Ventura is there, even mm -hmm. if it's closed down, there seems to still be a kind of pride, a kind of mm -hmm. happiness and, and joy associated with that space. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Ventura cares a lot about. He, he, he's a lot of moment. Sometimes he says, you know, those days when I worked in that factory or I worked with that boss, things were more um, moral. Mm. More. Um, like those bosses were bosses, right? Yeah, all bosses. But you know, they gave you a social security card, mm. and they took care of you if you were had a pain. You would go to that doctor, and they would take care of you, and you would have unemployment and. And today, today you're left to savages or the state. Mm. That's what he means, and I agree with him completely. Today we have savages, and we have fascists, and the state, which is another form of fascism. So at least they had these bosses, this kind of capitalist. Like <coughs> that is a link to Jacob Rees, for mm. instance. That's a very secret link to Jacob Rees. 
um, but at least you had this kind of bosses that took care of their employees, their, their workers. Now, it's every man for himself. There's no more bosses. There's no, yeah. There's no. So. So, what you say, the, 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 you said the pride in being a, a worker for something was real. Yeah. He, he was proud of being an employee for that factory, for that thing. He was, um, he was really, you can still feel it today. I worked that place it's something yeah. even if he, he suffered a lot that's where he lost his health his, um, his mind <coughs> but um, I don't know we shot in that place for a long time and I don't know if he felt the same thing so he was also always telling us, he, here I, I worked a lot in this place. I worked a lot in this place too. <laughs> I worked a lot. <laughs> it was, we had this sense of heaviness, of cement, of weight. Was there ever a feeling of the memory of ambition or the memory of, of the struggle? I, I know everyone talks about the name of the film. That, that seems like it's a question that keeps coming up. And to me, it, it's this horse that's associated with, with money. Like, it just seems like the idea of ambition or, or a dream. For me, it was more um, sound. Um, even written down in Portuguese. It was two words that were... And I, I've been saying that um, the word horse, you can have, we can have horse, I mean, people like me, we can have a film called horse, but a film called money, that's it's more for uh, the other side, the, the, the enemy. The enemy can have money. Uh, uh, Scorsese has a film called The Color of Money. Casino money, Transformers money, uh, traffic money, Che money, uh, stuff like that. They can have the it's not there, but it, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it really is like, like a neon sign behind the other word. So this title is not really... Mm, I'm not saying anything, I'm just... It's like the 3D in Godard, like, it, you know, when you see the Godard film, you have this... It's not the visual. It's, it's, it's it's not a visual. So if you see that, if you see the words detaching themselves. <coughs> so in another sense, I thought we should have, I should have the word money there. So, you know, money keeps Ventura go round <laughs> and me. But we are not allowed to have it. Mm. I had never money. I don't have money. Ventura didn't have money. We don't have money. And why should the other? So, at least it's written. We written. It's written in the catalogs in the, in the letters in the. 
marquees, at least it's written mm. money. Is it an ambition fro of Ventura? Is it um, does it mean something? I, I don't want to discuss that. I just want to propose that I have the right to call my film money. Yeah. Because that's what we deal with. Me, Ventura, all of my crew, my crew, the crew. So we have to... Mm, why not? But... Um, it's nothing more than that. It's so now, joking, I say, um, you want to talk about the money or the horse? Because the horse, we've been talking. We talk and talk and talk and get to no conclusions. And The horse gets eaten by vultures, too. Of course. <laughs> but we're always, it gets, gets, gets nowhere. We get nowhere with the horse. The horse stands still. But the money, we should discuss and talk about the money, because it's the money that gets me, that gets us here. Uh, it's, uh, it's the mystery in the, it's not the horse, the, the unknown in this, formula in this equation, it's not the horse. You could think that the horse, it's the poetic poetry in this. It's actually, it's the money, because the money got me here. I don't know how I got here. I mean, there was a plane. There was an airplane that took me here. I don't know who paid. Um, the mayor of Toronto? <laughs> no, really. The sponsors, L'Oréal. Dolby. <coughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. And well, of course, they paid me and... Oh, who's the other guy? Uh, George Cukor? No, no, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> who's the other guy? Uh, so, who paid me? Where is the money? <laughs> so that's a mystery. Is this a uh, oblivion letter that you're gonna adapt into your? Yeah, or something. Uh, yeah, something. Well, all the films c communicate, so they speak among mm, between them. So I'm waiting for them to, um, for this one to. <coughs> propose something. You said that you told Ventura that the next film has to be completely different, that you both need to... Yeah, yeah. We have two options. We wait for um, something to happen. Or we... we do something else before it ends. <laughs> it's, it's hard work. Mm. It's a lot of work, so... Perhaps she will rest a little bit and we'll do something else. I don't know. I imagine when you started doing Colossal Youth, though, it seemed like it was completely different, but it still communicated with the films before. I think a lot about the films. I think a lot about a lot of things, but not that much. So I don't know what will happen. 
I don't know how... What... Sometimes I hope for um, total destruction. That's what I hope. Because at least it would be... I shouldn't perhaps say this in such a violent way, but at least it would... Mm, wake, wake up, wake up a little bit. But um, I would prefer, yeah, I would like to do something more. Um, I don't know the letter that she, that he writes. He spends one hour and a half writing a letter that you don't see, but makes the, the girl disappear. So, it's something. She, if you make, if you write a letter, she... There's a story about a mask with Vitalina, I believe, mm. and there's something I want to know about it, which is you... It's another film. <laughs> you draw a connection with Straub. What? And um, the idea of... Maybe it's what you're talking about, with allowing something in that terrorizes the film. Or to allow something that you don't have control over, or that is off-putting to you, mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. and is that something that you're, you're going to do moving forward, or you're more prone to, or you're more accepting of? Yeah, yeah, everything that can be disturbing, or Vitalina is very disturbing, and as Ventura was, as Wanda was, as a lot of things were, but in that sense, they boycott, they, because I'm, I'm not young enough not to boycott myself. I used to do that, yeah. now I'm not don't have the imagination to boycott myself that much. I mean, to say, mm, don't do that, or mm, do something else, or mm, puzzle, or puzzle myself, or distract myself, or, or be completely in love with something, which is becoming, v in terms of filmmaking, perhaps a bit more um, mysterious, let's say. Because I was more um, into film than I, wa uh, than I am now. Even if people tell me and I read that this film seems to be very comes from a lot of filmmakers and filmmaking, and I really don't think so, but I accept that. Um, um, to be completely honest, the only thing I'm com absolutely in tune, I'm, I would not say in love, because this is a bit pretentious, but I'm very... Um, I have all the patience and all the care and attention, and, and this is work, I'm talking about work, is for them. I really think that the, what what exists is. I said that a lot of times, along for years and years. That sometimes I do a shot, and there is no one, and I feel uh, like an imposter. So I cannot deny that if there is not 
it's not Ventura or Van, it's the human figure, it's strange. Um, <coughs> something has to have the, a trace of a human presence. Uh, uh. Um, so I'm very uh, interested and that's what makes me move and make the film. It's but um, on the other hand, the, the it's coming, it's, it's it's coming to a um, point where um, there is a lot of emptiness, void, nothing. So. Why is it coming to that point? <laughs> because we don't have the faith. <coughs> the faith is leaving us. Like the flame, you know, the flame. <coughs> ah, cinema. <coughs> no, it's a, it's a nice old good game but it's a very superficial game <coughs> it's not very difficult and the difficult part in the game is in this art in this game game art it's okay you can call it Achivet used to call it game mm, I remember mm, at least in some of his best writings, he used to call it, it's a game, it's a game. So, <laughs> But the difficult part is lies somewhere else and we'll see if we have the, the, the strength and uh, the desire to Keep on <laughs> Truffaut <laughs> used to tell a very nice thing about Rossellini. <coughs> I tried to look for that on, on YouTube and it's not there, I think. I would love to see that again because I saw that a long time ago and it was really mm, mm, very, uh, how do you say, brilliant, l luminous. As he said, um, he explained that, you see, talking about, he was trying to explain neorealism. You know, and he said, um, um, Rossellini, you see, it's this man that, this filmmaker that um, went to kind of mm, table rase from zero degree, from something very plain, very common, very simple, very general, to the most abstract, absolute thing very quickly. So we went to um, Rome, to India, which is you know, it's already a jump from a city to a continent. And then from India to, actually said from Rome to Europe, 51. 
and then for Europe to India, and then f to India for um, Socrates or um, Saint Francis or um, Plato. And he went very fast and very um, almost without f r regret, um, not thinking with irrationally. And that is very suicidal for a filmmaker. <coughs> and he was talking about himself. That 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 is very moving if you see the Truffaut would, I find very moving all the time I have a great affection more for him than for his films but even for his films I don't care it's, he's a very moving touching figure for all of us <coughs> and he, w is, he was saying you see to be a filmmaker or to be a fiction worker in these times, you have to be a bit stupid. You have to be a bit n more than naive, stupid, idiot. You have to close your eyes to a lot of things. You have to compromise a lot. You have to not see this and this and this. And Rossellini s saw everything. He saw how people lived. So he um, saw um, a lot of things that you shouldn't see in normal, the normal commerce and industry of filmmaking, the normal business. So he was not the filmmaker that could um, um, stand before an uh, actor saying, I love you, or, or that guy is dead, or where, where is L Laura? Rossellini couldn't believe in that. He, he would laugh, he would break up laughing, like, uh, like uh, myself, and not like Truffaut. Yeah. Truffaut would keep on believing that the girl loved the boy and Laura is lost somewhere in, in Mississippi or um, something like that. So um, it's very easy when you're like that to jump from that very small space of Rome to the absolute domain of ideas and, and mystical ideas and religion and philosophy and uh, stupidity and abstraction, <coughs> absolute. You cannot think like that if you're a filmmaker. Or you can, but you will be a bit lost. You will be not with what Truffaut called cinema. Cinema is about this machine that is a little bit money and horse. And mm, Rossellini only saw the money. And I'm a little bit like Rossellini. I only see the money. I give you the horse, but the horse is, I hope, still with you. But what I really prefer is the money. And I'm, I don't know, it's a bit like Chamari, stroke Capricorn, I'm too old, I'm, I always see the money on the screen, always, I only see the money. Since I was very, very young, <laughs> I went there and it's all, I didn't see Gary Cooper, or, uh, I saw the money, I saw Gary Cooper, money. No, I got to a point where I can name the names and put the um, but the problem is that we do not have the 
we do not have the mm, capacity, the talent, the, mm, it's not the same world to mm, readjust the horse and the money. Because when you talk about Ford or when you or other people, uh, they were their art, their craft, what lied, I think, exactly in the way they adjusted the horse and the money, you know. Um, we can talk hours about John Wayne or Gary Cooper, but what we remember from a John Ford film is not John Wayne or Gary Cooper. It's always the guy who goes in one shot, there is a guy who makes John Wayne turn his head or tremble a little bit. And that is, it's the um, balance of forces inside the shot, the scene, the film. Um, and I'm not talking even about the objects or the mountains or the space. Really, if you talk about human forces, it's, it was about human forces, not about. Mm, you couldn't care less about the stars or John Wayne or. Uh, or um, so. So we've been losing a lot of things. Uh, when you say John Ford, fascist, conservative, you should think about what we have been losing. Um, in terms of, of the adjustment of all of this, this constellation that is a little bit anyway, I have this illness like Ventura. I mm, do not have the faith in fiction. Or I do not have, I do not believe in, or let's rephrase it, it's amazing that uh, there are still people that believe in film, cinema. It's amazing. It's for me. It's sometimes very comforting, very warm. Winter is coming. So <laughs> it's amazing, so, but but even Godard. Or I'm saying Godard because I also I should have said Straw because they are my main men. Still are, they will still always be, but they can they are still doing the work as it should should be done. Even with all the um, things that are not um, all the 3D and all the um, failures and all, there yeah, are still some questions and still some things that they are still putting on the table that nobody else does. But I don't know if I am probably more mm, extravagant than Godard in a certain way. Mm, reactionary for sure. <coughs> Being so prisoner to this form, to this thing. Not, not Thank you, Pedro.